Hey guys, okay, so <clears throat> Chantel here. Here I am. Hi. <laughs> I want to share this project with you. I'll work on these angles at some other point to get you guys so that you can see my beautiful face while I'm doing these projects. But for now, just watch the table. <laughs> So I want to make this cute little bag. I've been working on these bags and they are super, super adorable. Um, what was it called? Basket, a basket bag. That's what it's called. And it's just one cut really and a few stitches and you get this cute little bag and it's really adorable. Um, the video that I watched, she used some uh, bias tape I used some webbing here, which I'm not going to do again because I don't like the way that it gathers there. I think it might be a little bit too thick. So this was the first bag I made um, <clears throat> and I did use that webbing, but I don't really, I don't like it. it it's just, it's, it's not perfected to me. So, um, but it's cute. I'm going to put something in it, maybe some yarn or something. Um, we'll see. But that was the first one that I did. And this is one that I was working on next and you know kind of getting a little bit more of the hang of it and how to do it I didn't do any of that webbing on here <clears throat> I don't have bias tape I had didn't make any bias tape so I just went and did a stitch all the way down to um, to uh, weld the the um, flaps together and I just did that on both sides and um yeah so that one is cute too and i was just downstairs um <clears throat> looking in my um embroidery files to try to find a file that i could use to um either embroider directly onto the bag or to make a patch that i can um heat and bond onto this bag because that's really cute um of course i was thinking about my granddaughter when I saw the initial video for this bag and thinking of, you know, um, making her Easter basket out of that. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Right now I'm just playing around and seeing how it goes. I've got a couple of threads pulled out here. I was trying to see which one was going to work best with this fabric um, because this is the fabric that I'm going to use today. Uh, but I think, um, I think... I want to use this one because this is going to be my top fabric. This is going to be the inner fabric. <clears throat> so I think I want to use that one um, because it kind of makes that pop. But I don't want it to bounce against the lime trends. So maybe I should do that one because it will fade in better. Maybe definitely not yellow because yellow is too uh, the same as the other colors there. But... Yeah, I think I'm using that one. And honestly, that might be the first one that I picked out too. So I'm gonna just put these back. I really want these more color coded, but we'll get there. So I'm gonna have to change my thread, which is fine. I can get to that in a minute. Sewing machine is right behind me. I pulled out um, some of the other things you're gonna need. So for this bag I'm going to use two fat quarters and this is a fat quarter and you can get these at Walmart this one actually came from Walmart the Waverly brand and um, they are approximately 18 by 21 inches in length and I've learned that one of these covers the pattern perfectly so it would definitely work um, um, they used to be about 99 cent but I think with the inflation of everything else, including gas, <laughs> they might be a little bit more, maybe 129 or something like that. But I'm trying to use up fabrics that I have been collecting for the last several years and not buy anything. So I'm trying to coordinate what I have and use those items. So we're going to use this one today. And this one is also a fat quarter. I had just already pulled off the little um, uh, paper, the little label off of it. So I'm going to use that. And I did record myself making um, this this one here, but I didn't upload it. 
it's it's a little bit long so I said well let me try to do another video doing a you know another one and um, try to make it a little bit shorter because I don't want y'all to have to be sitting through watching me doing what I'm doing right now <laughs> so um, hopefully I can get this one um, you know a little bit more short short and sweet so I tried to like pre do some things like cutting out this interfacing um, so I took this piece of interfacing this is Paylon um, 809 it's the it's lightweight and you're going to need a piece of this to um, adhere to the outer fabric which that's going to be this one for me so I'm going to adhere it to that outer fabric and um, yeah, I got this one from, I bought uh, like two two yards of it from my local fabric store. But though Joanne's definitely carries this. You can get it in a roll. You can get it on Amazon. I know people that get it on Amazon, like in a big, you know, husky roll of it. Um, so you could do that. And um, like I said, this is the other fat quarter. I'm going to use... See, once you take your fat quarter, this one actually has the salvage edge on it. But once you take your fat quarter and the pattern, which I'm going to show you in a minute, see it fits perfectly right up to the edges. Uh, this one seems like it might be a little bit short, but I'm still I'm going to work I'm going to work with it because yeah, I just did. <laughs> So maybe, um, maybe this one, this bag will be a little bit shorter than the others, but there's that. And maybe it's just this, um, this piece, this pattern piece, because when I held it up to this piece, it, it did, it fit perfect from all sides. Yeah, see, has a perfect fit. So maybe it's just this piece, and, and probably because they have that salvage in on there, that might be why you lost a little bit of the um the actual pattern. But that's okay because that's like gonna be in the seam anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I want to get some of those wrinkles out. Oh, and see, here's this webbing that I used on the outside of the black bag. But it's really thick, so instead I'm going to use it for my um, my handles instead of making the handles out of fabric. Because I'm using these fat quarters. So I need two pieces of this webbing that are 20 inches long. And... It's only one inch wide, so I don't need to um, get my, I should be able to cut a straight line, there you go. So there's one, there's two. So now I have my two um, handles that are gonna go on the bag as well. And then here's this little sticky piece. Put that away. Boom, boom, boom. So this is the pattern. Um, like I said, I watched a YouTube video. She made this pattern. This is what it will look like. It is four sheets of cardstock lay next to each other all back back backed up together and then taped down the middle and taped the long way and then you would take it on the 11 inch side and fold it in half like this now it's all taped so you take it to the 11 in the 11 inch side and fold it in half like this and then fold it in half again and that will give you this right 
So it'll be folded in half here, the tape, and well, your tape will probably be here if it's in the direction of how I just folded it. So you'd have tape here and tape it, right? So then what you do is on your on one side of it, I have my marks here, but you might not really be able to see them. From the, the bottom edge, which is where it opens at, you would mark uh, from the folded edge over three inches, right? So three inches from the folded edge there. And from that three inch mark up two and a half inches. So two and a half up there and three inches here. And then you'd cut out all that extra and you'd be left with this. I made these extra marks for myself that I, so that I know where the folds are. And I also put it right here also so that I know that that's the fold. Here's the measurements to um, make the straps if you want to make the straps. So <clears throat> you would need um, two straps that's three inches by 20 inches. Um, that's going to make your, your, you know, your handles. So there's that too. And then, you know, the same size of interfacing because you want to put some interfacing on it so that they are not flimsy. It makes it really sturdy. Here's actually one that I had made. Right, so it's a three inch piece. And then there's the interfacing on it. Right, and then I folded, I folded in half from here to here. And I ironed that down. And then I came back and I met the end with the fold, this end with that fold, ironed those down a little bit and then I pull them together and that makes the straps and with the interfacing on it they're fairly sturdy so they work out really nicely <clears throat> um just like I said I did that on both of these both of these the straps have been made that way so it's pretty cool uh, so I have this let me turn my iron on because I would like to flatten out this fabric just a little bit. Before I start to kind of, you know, just pull it together. That way it can be as flat as it can be. Especially the edges, because I want to try to get it to really line up there. I don't have to do too too severe of a pressing because um, there's going to be more pressing like in the next stages like once I stitch it together I'll go back and press over it and um, you know then after I turn it inside out or right side out I'll stitch it again. So that's that one. Just get it nice and flat and straight. And then this one, I actually want to sew, to uh, iron it, but I want to iron on the interfacing. And your interfacing, it's got like a dull side and then a side with a little bit of a shine to it. The side that has a little bit of shine to it, that's what you want to put face um, up or face down on your the back side of your fabric. Okay? So that goes face down on your fabric. Now this part I'm doing differently also because in the other ones what I did was I first cut the pattern and uh, first I cut the pattern you know out of the fabric and the interfacing and then I adhered. My mama's calling me. Okay, so you guys should know if if you're lucky enough to still have your mama around. When your mama calls you, especially when she's FaceTiming you or what have you, you cannot not accept those phone calls. So I have removed that audio from this section of the video, but I still wanted you to see that... Um, 
I was pressing down the fabrics, I added the interfacing, and I'm going to get everything all together and lined up so that I can then cut my pattern out. So just keep on watching, listen to this audio um, voiceover, and then I'm going to pop back in and start talking again after that phone call has been completed. Thank you so much. So, there's the pattern. Now, what I can do is, yeah, this is what I think I'm going to do with this. Because um, the sizing is off a little bit. So, I think I'm going to use my pen, pencil here. And this one is a water-soluble pencil. And I'm just going to trace the pattern and then go back in with my scissors oh, and cut it out. I think that might be the easiest thing so I make sure that I get it perfect and hopefully I am making enough of a pencil mark it is on the back side so it won't be seen anyway which I just realized so I could go a little bit harder just to make sure that it's there the first time and I don't have to move it and do it again I think this pencil might need to be sharpened too. Let's see. pretty good okay so you could also which I'll show you in one second let me pin this you could also take your fabric right you've got your fabric laid out in the way it's gonna go So you could lay your fabric out, you know, on one on top of the other, and then fold the hat, do the folds, right? Fold it in half, make it nice and even, and then fold it again, make it nice and even, and then take your pattern that's folded, which is what I had started doing, and then put your pattern, make sure you got your pattern going in the same direction that, you, that your folds are. So that fold and that fold. So it would go this way. So then you could take your pattern and put it down here. Either trace, you know, that with your pencil and then cut it out. And then you'd have the whole thing with the one shot. But for this particular fabric, because it's not uh, completely even, right? We got a little bit of extra on that side and a lot of salvage up there. I'm going to do it this way. And, uh -oh. I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut right on the line. Make sure not to cut yourself because, whew, baby, definitely hurt. So there, so now the fabric is all cut out, it's ready to go. And because I have pinned it together, I don't need to use any clips because it's already pinned together. So now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew from here all the way around the bottom to here. I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and the end 
and the same down here. So from here, all the way around, stop here, back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now here we are at the sewing machine. And again, I'm going to stitch the two fabrics together. I change my thread. I'm going to go in about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end and get these stitched together. You can either now use some snips and you would just want to snip around the edges where and these snips act like they don't want to work right now where um, your fabric is going to turn the corners so you just snip right up to your um, your stitch lines without cutting your stitch lines or if you have a pair of pinking shears which I do um, you could use those shears and cut let's see if I could turn you a little bit you probably will see more of me which <laughs> whatever it's my my um, garbage can I have that right below me here and so I'm going to use the pinking shears and just cut right up against the curve so that did you even see that probably not because I'm so low <laughs> let me see if I can get higher <laughs> here we go I'm just gonna snip it snip snip and I'm only doing it right where the corner is on both sides the rest is okay so then I'm gonna come and do this side and turn it over this way so I can see the threads and I think it's all falling in the garbage can which is good I did just sweep and stuff in here yesterday but that means nothing <laughs> this room needs to be swept every day that I come in here cuz <laughs> I'm not in here every day but I can make some mess. Okay, there we go. Were you able to see that? Let me see. Yeah, you see. And then that side. You see how I didn't have that much interfacing right there? But I'm not going to worry about it. It's just, that's the, um, it's still going to stand up because the body has um, the interfacing in it. So, then you want to take this and turn it inside out. Yes! Yes! See, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that if I sat down and decided to do something, that it would be great. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. So, I'm going to take you back to the table and I'm going to press this down. This is one of those, if you don't use me, I'm going to turn myself off irons. <laughs> I have to remind the iron what the on boss is. It's me, boo boo. So let's see, before I do that, I'm going to take this. This is a, um, a crochet needle, one of the long ones though. But I'm going to take that and I'm going to just go up in here, right along the back of this part, not where the hook is. And just make sure that I've got it all the way out. The threads, the, um, you know, the fabric. It's kind of like pushing out the corners, you know, even though it's rounded. It just helps to lay the fabric out. I don't know if you can hear my husband. I was, I've decided, I think, that on the days when he is home, recording videos might not be the best idea. <laughs> if he's here. Um, because right now, I am upstairs in what is my sewing room. But if I'm downstairs trying to do, you know, like something on the computer to show, 
you all, his office is right next door. And if he takes phone calls or things like that, or maybe those days, it might be a voiceover as opposed to me chatting with you while I, while I work. I don't know. We'll have to see. We shall see. So, yeah, I'm going to lay that out. So, look, if you can see right here, that's that salvage edge, right? Because we lost some. So, it didn't really work out. So, in, with patterns, if you're going to use fat quarters, make sure that it's a complete um, coverage of the design. Um, and you don't have that salvage at the end there because that, or if you don't mind it looking like that, or if it's for you, if it's something that you're trying to, you know, sell or make for someone or something like that, you might not want to have that on you. But, yeah. I don't mind because these are really all for me right at the moment. So, just playing around. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is laying out so nicely. Let me tell you guys, this one is coming out so good, better than all the others. And they, they don't look bad. They look good. But this one, like my pattern, my fabric is perfect. I see like a little bit of extra right here, that yellow. But I can get rid of that fairly easily with the scissor. Let me move this iron so I don't burn myself. Yep. Cause look, it's just, it's just laid out. Look at that, 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 laid out flat. But yes, I can come right up in here and just cut it right. I don't play with these scissors either because these bad boys are sharp. I don't want my little fingers in the way. If I don't think I can get it, I leave it and where it is. Now we're all done. This is the inside, so you want to flip it so that the outside of the bag is on top. And then you want to start to assemble it. So you want to take this corner and pull it there, this corner and pull it there, that corner, pull it there, that corner, pull it there. Clip, clip, and then sew. Okay? So... Let's start here. Take this corner, boom, and then this corner, bam. Put them together like so. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. And then clip. All right? And now the other side. You gotta give me a minute so I can make an adjustment so you can see what I'm doing because it's just as easy but it's a little bit more you gotta think about it right because now the fabric looks like this but what you do is you kind of imagine right if you fold in the bag up so you pull it back like this take one side boom Pull it all the way to the end there. Boom. And then bring the other one over to meet it. Make sure that they're nice and flush and straight. And then there's the other one. Boom. Nice and flush and straight. Just like that. And then clip it. I'm going to make sure that they're nice and straight because... Looks like it might be off a little bit. Okay. I'm going to stitch this and then I'll be back. Okay. Okay. So I went over to the machine and I did a straight stitch first on both sides. And then I went back over the straight stitch with the zigzag stitch just to double secure the um, the closure of the bag. So, oh, and then I went with my pinky shears and just cleaned, cleaned them up. So it's nice and neat. And now, I can turn the bag right side out. This is where you see the magic. 
works like magic, baby. I'm just taking my hands and pushing them down in the corners to get the corners pushed out. just like the time of my life making these little bags because like I said this is like what my third one but it's really cute so you do that next those stitches and to put your straps on so just do a strap there put a little clip on it and then take it like this make sure that it's straight I'm going to put that on that side. Um, I usually will measure them on my mat to make sure that um, they are an equal amount of space apart. Right? And I usually use pins too at this point because the pin keeps it in place. And although this is my first time using the webbing, because I did the binders, binding before, I just lost a stick pin. So one, two, and a half. I'm gonna put it at two. Yeah, I'll put it at two. This one, put that two. That's nine. Okay. Put a pin in it. Yep. And flip it over. And really, now I can just line these up with those. And you know, honestly, be this doing this part before you stitch it, it still works the same because the bag already has a level of stability where it's stiff enough that it's staying in place. So you know that wherever you're gonna stitch it here, that's where it's gonna be. Where's that pin? This is not pushed all the way out either. I think I need. It's not sitting flush down there. Maybe I can go over it with the iron too. Right. I'm going in kind of hard, but you might not really want to go that hard and bunch of stitches. But I know that I have um, the zigzag stitch in there also so okay so we got that and that and that and that and this let's do this another thing that I did which kind of helped me decide where to stitch it Oh, why does give me a hard time? It's folded in half like that. And then you can also see. And then I'll put a pin right there. And then that part goes together. And the same thing over here. See it all even? Put a pin right there. Boom. 
that's the final part. And the bag is basically done. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. To get more um, sewing tutorials, I'm going to be doing some um, embroidery. I've got a couple of embroidery projects that I'm going to work on with you guys. So, yeah, I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.